Hello, my gay gawkers, and welcome to another glitzy and glittery episode of Pick Wine with me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Today's show is Glamour, darling. Our guest is the reigning queen of Glamazonia and a true blue drag race all-star. She snatches all the trophies wherever she goes, and without a doubt, she gives you mug for days. I'm talking, of course, about the legendary Mariah Balenciaga. Uh -huh. But before she promenades on out here, we've got two children in their natural hay queen habitat. I must introduce. It's my emotional support orchestra, Adam Joseph and Erica Tor Avion. <laughs> the feeling behind it. Oh my goodness. Yes. She's feeling it. She's feeling it today. She's feeling it. Yes. You are feeling it. Also today, you're giving me one of my favorite Erica Tour things, what? which is an eyebrow that says, I'm not having it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my angry bird's eyebrow. Oh. Eyebrow? Eyebrow. Yes. An eyebrow. <laughs> Your eyebrow is fantastic. You're gonna get those pigs, Erica. <laughs> Fly! <laughs> now that's a video game I could get behind. The Erica Tour Aviance edition of Angry Birds uh, called Cunty Birds. Yes. Now available on iTunes. <laughs> Well, honey, we're New York queens, and we love the ballroom scene, and we've got a ballroom queen in the house today. Mariah Balenciaga is here. Hit it, emotional support orchestra. She's got love for days, two legs for weeks. Mariah, Mariah on Hey Queen. And we'll be back with Mariah right after this very gay break. Our guest today has mug for days, legs for weeks, and face forever, sweetie, is the one and only Mariah Balenciaga. <laughs> hey, Queen. Hey, baby, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm always good when you're around. You always have a great, fun attitude whenever I see you at the club, drag con, anywhere. I know you're going to bring a smile to my face. It's the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that that is what one of our most recent guests said. They said, of course you like Mariah. She's always drunk. <laughs> it's, it's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you're looking so Stunning today, as usual. I did my best. I literally did my best. I showed up with one outfit, and it happened to be green. Oh, no! I was like, <laughs> the one thing y'all told me not to wear, and I brought a full green dress. So then, of course, I had to go ahead and ha have a Lyft driver deliver my other parcel. Oh, well, we appreciate <laughs> that, because you look stunning, sparkle. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, Erica has been sitting and staring at your face in the monitor and saying, <laughs> girl, it's sitting. It's sitting. Well, Miss Erica sitting. inspired me today with my eyebrows. I was just like, you know what? I decided to go a little higher up. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love a bitchy brow? Mm, yeah. The bitchiest. Yes. <laughs> right, that's right. We have the bitchy over on this side and very bitchy. She's that angry. <laughs> and an orange oh. fang. We don't want to leave you out. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Finally, that. someone's giving Adam what he oh. needs. Mariah, it's time for us to get to the tea. The tea. I want to talk about the powerful anti-bullying campaign video, Stop the Threat, Stop the Racism, that you were just in with a lot of your other drag race sisters. Uh, you know, I was uh, excited that they asked me to do that. Um, honestly, it's been beyond past time for Agreed. people to acknowledge what's happening. Uh, I think we've been too complacent, too comfortable for far too long. And so it, 
how people, how this country has treated people of color, whether it be brown, black, dark, uh, yellow, like from every region, every person has had their turn, unfortunately, in this country about being discriminated against and we never address it. We sweep it under the rug. It's okay. We're, not like that any as bad anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, no, sweetie, we're still horrible. We're still bad. We still need to address these issues because until we do, again, it's just gonna be another demographic in the next decade or the next generation. So I think the more that we speak out about it and make it more visible, what's really happening is, you know, sooner we can actually fix it. Especially shocking coming from the drag race fandom. I mean, it's now just a fact that black queens get more hate, more negativity put at them over and over again by this fandom that's supposedly based on a show that's based upon love. And, you know, so far, I'm glad to see the show stepping out to do something to try to push that away. What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts is I wish the franchise would have done it sooner mm -hmm. because the sooner that you cut that shit off, the sooner you can just let people know it's not acceptable because now we have a culture of it after what, 12 seasons? Yeah. We have a culture of that toxic fandom and so now we have to correct it. And to me, I think if you hit it and you teach the, the, the children better at the beginning, you don't have to go and do damage control. Yeah. And I think that's what we're doing now is damage control when we could have started out acknowledging the problem. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, it's the history of, you know, our culture here. The people of color have to work harder, be smarter, just to get a fraction of the headway as our white counterparts, unfortunately. And we saw just recently a wonderful queen like Widow Von Du <laughs> had put up a message on Twitter saying she was ready to quit. It, the fact that um, she even got to that stage is very disheartening because it's, there's so many people that we don't get to see their joy, we don't get to hear their message, we don't get to uh, see them fully shine because they're constantly being pushed down and there's constant boot on their neck. And it's like, who can genuinely go out and entertain people and make them happy when those same people you're trying to make happy and entertain are making sure that you are unhappy? Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's like such a paradox. What was your experience on the show? Did you get a, like racial ba racially like biased negativity when you were on the show? For, for myself, fortunately, I did not. Um, don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because I'm racially ambiguous. I don't know if I'm not that kind of black girl for people, mm. you know, because that happens. It's, uh, I think it might be uh, colorism. Mm -hmm. um, there's also like, uh, the vernacular used, you know, how the queens speak. Because I know I did get one message in, during season three, after season three, uh, which was my respective season, um, where someone hit me up from another country and they were just like, you ignorant, you wetback, da la 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 la, you need to learn how to speak English. I was like, who are, what? Wow. And you know how, like, you can kind of trace back where they found you? Yeah. Um, I was tagged in a picture as Alexis. So that message was meant for Alexis. And I was like, this is really what the girls are dealing with. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not light. It's not like, oh, I didn't like your shoes. Right. I didn't like your, your, your eyeshadow that week. It's literally, you should go hang yourself type of things. And it's like really heavy. And it just goes to show you, not just in the US, but globally how far we need to go when it comes to racial bias, color bias. Exactly, we gotta look at that. I don't wanna take out the glass, we gotta look at it, we gotta do something about it, we gotta speak out about it. And call out, call the people out on it. Yeah. Don't sit there uncomfortably silent it's like, no, nah, hold on, bitch, you right, really exactly. just said that to her. <laughs> yes. It's like, no, fuck you, she's fine, you're the problem. Exactly, Mariah. It seems simple to me. Agreed. <laughs> uh, now, Mar Miss Mariah, you're not only a beauty for the ages, not only a ballroom queen, not only a drag race all-star, but you are an entrepreneur because you have a new line of candles that have just come out. 
Okay. Tell me all about it. Well, you know, I like nice things. Oh, look at you and your ads yeah. with that. Oh. oh I told you, those eyebrows, oh. you inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I was uh, sitting at home like most of us during quarantine. And I was like, you know, um, it was kind of practical necessity. It's like, how can I make money yeah. without being around people? <laughs> it was weird to say, but it's true. Um, and then also do something that the other girls aren't really doing, because we have a huge franchise. There's over 200 of us now. And something that I still feel like is me. I love nice smelling things. I love things that get me in the mood fragrances and mm. and who doesn't like a candle to set the mood and so I was like you know what my girlfriend Dolores had pitched it to me before and I was like ah oh, no and I was like okay this time oh yeah uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I was like let's go ahead and give it a try and um, yeah I just did it stepped out on a ledge and hey it hasn't broken yet Sweetie, anyone who has a candle named Wicked Beauty yeah. is uh, someone who is all right in my book. I now, look at her hair and I'd say she's seductive mm -hmm. and she's alluring. <laughs> I look at her there and I say she's sexy and provocative. I look at her hair and I think that she's childish and little girl type, you know, and I look <laughs> at her hair and it's the same and I look at her hair and I think of... Wicked beauty. <laughs> <laughs> A miss, quote for the ages. <laughs> yes, Miss Octavia St. Laurent oh, was known you. for, um, in New York, you know, as you know, of course. Uh, Heavenly Angel was Heavenly her Angel. alter ego away from ballroom scene. Yeah. But she was also known for her wicked beauty, and that's actually who inspired me to name the candle Wicked Beauty. Yeah. A lot of the names for the candles and fragrances, um, are pretty much like inspired by ballroom. Okay, what are some of the other ones? Uh, we have Sex Siren, which uh, is of a, course. which is a category, mm -hmm. and then we also have It Girl, mm -hmm. with the smell is bubblegum and money. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the It Girl is the bubblegum and money one, uh, and then I'm also releasing two new ones that are called Undeniable and Unforgettable, and that's part of a chant. Oh right. Yeah. So. Oh, she's so bringing her ballroom roots to the beauty world as it should be. It's who I am. It's a huge part of who I am. Yeah. Hello, children. Click here. Click here. And subscribe. You're welcome.